Hi everyone. In today's lecture, we'll discuss about the AT fifty one architecture. AT fifty one was one of the most oldest architecture for microcontrollers. It was developed by Intel in somewhere around nineteen seventy nine, and it was one of the most used architecture in the industry. So let us look at the features of the AT fifty one architecture. If you buy a AT fifty one based microcontroller, what do you expect from it? It has an eight bit CPU. What do you mean by an eight bit CPU? That means it can process eight bit data comparatively faster. So it does not mean that you cannot process sixteen bit data. It take, can also process sixteen bit data, thirty two bit data, or sixty four bit data also. But it can do the processing of an eight bit data faster. then you have something called as a 16 bit program counter what do you mean by a program counter we'll discuss it a little bit later but 16 bit program counter ensures that you have around 64 that is 2 raised to 16 is equal to 64 kb of program memory then we have an 8 bit program status word you have a 8 bit stack pointer internal 4 kb of rom so you have already 4 kb of memory that is available to you and also in that you can have additional 60 kb more so you can have in total 64 kb of memory then you have internal ram of 128 bytes where it is divided into four register banks 16 bytes of bit addressable memory then it has 32 io pins which can be used as an input as well as an output right then you have two 16 bit timers for timing applications serial data communication for communication applications two external and three internal interrupt sources for interfacing for a high speed data finally we have the oscillator and the clock circuit now let us look at this feature one by one so this is the same thing shown in a block format now what is the main part of it or one of the major component is called as the oscillator now why do you require an oscillator is because a microcontroller is nothing but a system of flip flops right so it has flip flops or synchronous devices so it has a lot of synchronous devices so it requires a clock to drive the synchronous clock devices to run in tandem okay so that is why you require an oscillator now this oscillator can be a small value from 1 megahertz and maximum it can go up to 20 megahertz right so you have the clock and the clock describe the speed of the microcontroller so if you want a higher speed microcontroller the processing has to be faster use a higher speed frequency if you want lower frequency or the processing speed to be smaller you can go for a lower frequency crystal right now the second important part is the arithmetic logic unit this is what actually does the data processing so in the previous lecture we were talking about the data processing so here is what actually does the simple data processing now this alu is 8 bit and that is why we always call this as an 8 bit microcontroller so that is why we call 8051 as a 8 bit microcontroller right then we have the bus control then we have this four ports io ports which can actually control external environment so as we are talking about microcontroller we want to control the external environment we have input and output ports all of these ports can be configured either as an input or as an output device right then we need to communicate with other devices we have the serial port right then we have for timing applications we have two 16 bit timers which can be configured for different different modes and we will see in the subsequent lecture how we can do that but this is for timing application and this is for communication right now 
we have 4 KB of ROM which can be extended to 64 KB of memory. So, in total we can have 64 KB of instructions that can be given, 64 KB of instructions that can be given to the AT51. So, our program can be of 64 KB size. Then we have 128 bytes of internal. So, this is basically internal RAM. Now, if we want more data be stored, you can have more than 64 KB of external data memory. Program memory. So, this is program memory and this is data memory. So, here you can see that you can have external 64 KB. If you want to store more memory, we can have 64 KB of external memory also, right? Now, so this is what is a very generic AT51 pinout will look like. Now, this is a 40 pin dip. So, this is called as a 40 pin dip, which was the oldest one of the oldest packages that was available. Nowadays, you will get 64 pin, 20 pin, different different sizes of AT51, which we will not discuss over here. We are talking about AT51 generic microcontrollers. So, this is one of the oldest pinouts that you can see over here and this is the pinout that you will see in most of the devices. Now, as you can see port 10 as uh, we see that all the ports have 8 pins, right? That is 8 pins starting from 0 ending at 7. So, we have P1.0 to P1.7. In the same way, we have 3.0 to 3.7 p0.0 to 0.7 and p2.7 to p2.0. Now, you can see except for port 1, port 0 and port 1, port 2 having one more functions available to it. So, this is multiplexing, right? So, here we have multiplexing of the pins. So, the pins can do multiple functions depending upon the user. So, again, it depends upon the user. So, p0 will act as a address and data line or a data line. P2 will act as a just an address line. P3 will act as pins for communication. So, this is for the serial communication. This is for the external interrupts. These are for the timers and this is for the external interfacing of memory. So, this is for external interfacing of memory. Now, if you can see, this is the two pins where a crystal or a frequency has to be provided and this will run, this clock will run the microcontroller since as we discussed, this is a synchronous device. That means when you talk about synchronous, you require a clock. Now, the important one more pin is the reset pin. Okay. Now, reset is an active high signal. So, here what will happen is if you give an active high pulse, so this kind of pulse, it will be held in reset. It is basically like your PC. So, when you reboot the button, so there is a reset button. When you have a PC, when you reset it, you see that the PC will reboot and it will start running from the program from the start. That means your BIOS comes up, BIOS comes up, then your Windows is loaded and, uh, and so on and so forth. So, in the same way, when you press a reset, your program will start from the starting location. Okay. Now, the what is the CPU here when you talk about the CPU we have an 8 bit ALU and 8 bit accumulator. So, this is also 8 bit accumulator and 8 bit register An 8 bit register this is a temporary register used for some other function and a PSW that is nothing but your program status word. Okay. So, we will see in the subsequent slide what are all the 3, 4, components. So, we have this program memory organization. Okay. Now, what is happening is AT51 has embedded 4 KB of memory. Okay. And you can have additional extra memory that you can have around 60 KB or a 64 KB. Nowadays, most of the AT51 will have 64 KB of internal memory most of the time. Okay right or you can have choices of 16 KB or 8 KB or even 4 KB. So, what will happen is that basically depending upon the program size, you can choose what memory is there and you do not have to interface any 
uh, memory to it ok. So, this we will not see in detail. So, we have this 4 KB of memory starting from address location 0 0 0 to f f f f right. So, this is 64 KB of memory 64 KB of memory right. So, now let us look at the data memory organization. So, as we discussed we have 128 bytes of internal data right. So, we have 128 bytes of internal data. Now, the first 32 bytes ok. So, if you see first 32 bytes is one 8 byte, the other 8 byte, the third 8 byte and the fourth 8 byte. So, that is from 0 to 7, 8 to 1 0, this is in hex ok, 1 1 to 1 8, 1 9 to 1 f. You have this 4 register bank, this is called as register bank 0, register bank 1, register bank 2 and register bank 3 right. So, here what will happen is you can have the choice of any of the register banks to be selected. The moment you select any of the register bank that particular memory will be named like R0, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, R7. So, if I choose register bank 0, the addresses 00, 00 becomes R0, 0, 01 becomes R1, 03 becomes R2, 04 becomes R3 and so on and so forth. So, I will write the addresses over here. This is showing uh, for register bank 1. So, basically now R0 is at 08, this will be at 09, this will be 0A, 0B, 0C, 0D, 0E and 0F. Now, if I choose this is for bank 1, ok, this is for bank 1. Now, if I choose bank 0, ok, if I choose bank 0 as my register bank, what will happen is R0 address will be 00, this will be 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06 and 07, ok. So, this naming of R0 and R1 can be considered. So, in your class, let us say you have a CR right you uh, you have a class representative you have a class designation right you have a sports council representative so what i can do is basically any roll number can be mapped to any of this post and that is done by the whole class right so in the same way over here a programmer can allot an address a name okay that is given as r0 r1 r3 r4 r5 r6 r7 and depending upon the name the address will be allocated over here so, in this case bank 1 is right now being shown as being selected. So, this is the address for each of these names ok. If I select bank 0 automatically the name will be shifted to this particular addresses right. Now, after that there is a bit addressable RAM that is 16 bit addressable RAMs. So, 16 is nothing but so this is 60 32 bytes of register memory. we have 16 bytes that means each byte has 8 bits. So, 16 into 8 is equal to 128 bits which are addressable. So, we will look at this bit addressable when we are looking at bit instructions ok. Right now you just need to understand there is 128 bits which can be addressed right. So, this is the bit addressable area. Then this is called as the scratch pad RAM or the general purpose RAM where you can store your temporary data when you are doing programming and stuff like that. So, this is 80 bytes of memory. Then from the last 128 bytes, this is the 128 bytes, this is called as the special function registers ok. The detailed explanation of SFR bit addressable area and PSW, you will see it in the subsequent lectures. So, in this lecture, we have looked at the basic understanding of 8051 architecture. Happy learning and goodbye. Thank you.